Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. And we're coming on to one of my favourite, favourite topics. Good old concrete, number one used material in the entire world. How can we make the roadways for The Boring Company inside the tunnels more efficient? I've been thinking about this for a good year or so. I've had a good old think about this. Is this worth doing? I've come to the conclusion, absolutely it's worth doing. Just by a small investment in grinding and polishing and then sealing the roadway with the boring company, we can greatly, greatly increase the efficiency of the system, thus saving us a great deal of money. We can either plough that money into other systems or take the profits out and invest them into other things, maybe like vehicles. So the process of polishing and grinding can be done via uh, sort of medium to small size industrial uh, machines like we are seeing in this video. However, it can be done on a much larger scale uh, for the Boeing company because we have miles and miles of tunnel. It's gonna require maybe four or five individual pieces of kit operating at the same time to ensure that we get the roadway polished and grinded to the correct uh, specification for what we require. So let's have a good chat about this because I think this is absolutely well worth doing. The numbers add up. It definitely improves efficiency a great deal and thus we should do it because we, we, want to, we want this system to make money. We are not the railways. We are not given free money by the government. We actually want to make money. So, here we are. Concrete road, roads. Can we make a road more efficient? Absolutely. We can work on a system that polishes the roadways, makes them ultra slick, ultra smooth, and thus, when a pod is cruising along in the tunnel, the rolling resistance is improved. The coefficient of friction between that tire and the polished concrete road deck is much, much better. Therefore, equals more money in our pockets. Vehicle power consumption is largely determined by the coefficient of friction. This is therefore the relationship between the tire surface and the road surface. So. There's definitely work to be done in terms of tires, but I think the big improvements, 70 to 80% of the improvements are gonna come in making adaptions to the road surface. The coefficient of friction is a measure of the amount of friction between two surfaces. So, first of all, let's talk about tires. Tire rolling resistance, the formula that you use to calculate the rolling resistance actually comes from the coefficient of friction and is constantly improving as it is a very competitive industry at the tire industry. And there's constantly um, innovation there in terms of how can we improve the rolling resistance of tires? Because it equals money in your pocket if you are a freight operator, if you are, or, or operate a taxi service, you can save money by investing in a good pair of tires. Significant improvements, however, are not possible with tires because there's, there's, there's not quite, there's not really much more you can do with tyres. We, we've had, you know, nearly 100 years of incremental improvements and we, we've got to the stage almost where really we're not going to squeeze out more than, you know, you know, half a percentage improvement in terms of tyres. However, another way that you can improve rolling resistance is inflating the tyres slightly higher than you would usually, but within a safe limit, and using nitrogen inside the actual tires because it is a much, much more reliable gas than just a mix of what's in the air. If you have pure nitrogen, or at least 98% nitrogen in your tires, you can quite accurately measure what's gonna happen with that tire. There's less variation. Okay, so adapting the roll deck. Reinforced concrete thanks to its combination of elements, so cement, aggregate, steel, water and additives is very durable and can be grinded and polished. 
please note the contents of concrete can vary considerably from uh, country to country because they use different aggregates the contents of the concrete and the coefficient of friction is going to be affected greatly by the aggregates we use this is well beyond my my area of expertise it is definitely a bit of a science project you've got to play around with different um, contents in the concrete and establish which aggregate improves the coefficient of uh, friction the most without adding significant cost when you polish and grind concrete it produces this almost it's just an absolutely beautiful uh, polished kind of glass like surface and and you can you you can see the exposed aggregates there and it, it, it's just a very it, not only is it a beautiful looking surface but it is very very slick and that is what we are after in certain parts of the tunnel now i'm not saying that on the ramps and on the exit roads we're going to have polished uh, concrete absolutely not we probably want to do more of a float finish on the concrete and sealed but in other areas we want polished grinded or grinded polished and then sealed concrete finish now to actually measure the coefficient of friction um, it, it's very very much uh, a science project because you're going to get different results uh, very 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 different results in terms of the the, the quality of the rubber the, the actual contents of the concrete, how much cement is in there, how much water is in the mix. It's very, very variable. So when you see these guides on the internet, it, it, it's really just a guideline. It, it, it could be very, very far off what you actually achieve on site. However, even a relatively poor concrete can be polished and grinded. Uh, and with a good sealer, that's going to reduce the coefficient of friction greatly i'd hope with the boring company that they'd invest considerably in very very high quality aggregates good cement content uh, obviously very very low water content um and that that obviously needs to be compacted correctly the coefficient of friction could be as low as 0 0.4 it's possibly going to be in around the 0 0.44 mark it it will be determined by the aggregates that are used in the concrete road deck. But again, massive improvements in the coefficient of friction if we can polish the road deck. And it, it's almost like this, this, this glass-like finish. Very, very slick. With a car going down, um, any kind of uh, slight amount of, of dampness or water on the surface is going to make it very, very lubricated. And all, almost to the stage where it might not be uh, quite as, as safe as we'd like. But that can be corrected by having plenty of drainage uh, channels. And ensuring that when the vehicles are uh, entering the system, we've not got water runoff into the system at those areas. So here is our tunnel. Here is how I propose we could potentially do this. So as you can see, the, the area in dark grey, that is our concrete road deck. We are going to then uh, grind, followed by uh, a polishing process of the concrete in these two areas. Why two areas and not the whole slab? Well, uh, it certainly is not, it's certainly, there's certainly a cost to doing this. It's not going to be excessive, but it adds time to the program. So if we can reduce the amount of time we are spending grinding and polishing the surface, possibly by dividing it into two sections and then using a different team on each side, using various machines at different parts in the tunnel, we can greatly improve the speed of grinding and polishing the concrete. As such, the tires will sit on that area there. The, 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 because we're gonna try and keep the tunnels as straight as possible, and we're definitely, definitely not going to polish the concrete uh, in uh, tight bends. Um, where we are actually banking the corners uh, and the, the radii of the actual corners is less than 80 metres. We are definitely, definitely not going to be grinding and polishing the concrete because we, we want um, 
a greater coefficient of friction in those corners so that we've got more grip for when the, the actual pod is going around those corners. But as you can see, we're minimizing the amount of concrete that we have to polish and grind. We've introduced um, a channel here where potential water could be uh, extracted from the system or pool. And we've got our, our opening here, which reduces the amount of concrete we're going to use. And we could potentially use that for uh, maybe as a cable run or potentially maybe as a, a, a ventilation uh, a kind of a shaft for pushing uh, uh, into the system from underneath the roadway rather than doing it from the top uh, via uh, ductwork. So again, these areas are going to be very, very slick, polished, beautifully um, looking kind of exposed concrete, which is going to be sealed and it'll be perfect for running our pods at very, very high speeds in platoons. So what is the summary? What am I trying to drive at here? We can greatly improve efficiency of our system, therefore saving money, therefore increasing our gross margins. By grinding, polishing and sealing the concrete, we dramatically increase the energy efficiency of our system because the electric motors in our pods are having to work less hard to maintain the speed of our wheels because the rolling resistance has been greatly reduced. Further increases our already impressive cost efficiency lead in mass transit. So not only have we got super efficient vehicles, um, we've also got the cost of electricity is very, very low because we're using renewable energy sources and we're storing our own power. This allows the Boeing company to be ruthless and undercut local rail services and rapidly gain market share. So if we're operating in the same corridor as a local rail, we can reduce our prices, pull people away from those uh, rail services because not only are we faster, more convenient, we cost less and it's a more comfortable ride. And obviously we're protected from the ele elements as well, which is perfect. So again, we can, we can basically kill rail services by ruthlessly undercutting them in certain areas. Or, rather than ruthlessly undercutting the rail service, we can uh, focus on achieving a gross margin of over 25% per ticket, which is, is at the moment my kind of um, choice, because we want to invest money in expanding the system, building new tunnels, uh, and maybe in the, in the medium to long term, we can focus on undercutting rail services and potentially pulling passengers out of rail and onto our service thus putting the local rail services out of business or at least into the red. One most important thing is that obviously over time there's going to be wear and tear of the surface. Um, we're going to be running a lot of pods through our system. Uh, that's going to wear down the concrete. We will need to uh, polish it every 8 to 10 years and then uh, reseal it as well. Possibly slightly more than that, it will be determined by how much wear and tear is occurring on, on a yearly basis. If things are starting to get quite um, quite bad, it might need to be every sort of six to seven years. But when you actually seal the surface after you've polished it, it actually hardens the concrete and improves the durability of the concrete. So uh, I'm pretty confident eight to ten years, if not longer, is very, very viable. And... Just to confirm something from a previous video, how efficient is um, an electric car? Well, we don't actually have official numbers for that, but I uh, was given this report from uh, one of our supporters of this channel, and it, it's pretty damning, really. A Toyota Prius with just the one passenger, because it's averaging just the one passenger, is doing 0.64 kilowatt hours per passenger mile. Now, if you had multiple passengers in the Toyota Prius, you could get that down to 0 0.16, which is then competing with uh, a light rail and your modern streetcar chassis trams. So in terms of what the actual Boeing company pods are gonna achieve, we are talking in the same kind of ballpark as modern streetcars and trams. And that is without our polished concrete road decks, which is then going to increase, in, increase the um, energy efficiency even more 
thus taking us below modern streetcars and trams. So therefore we will actually be more efficient per passenger mile than any kind of rail system. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching the video. What are your honest thoughts? Put them in the comments below. Do you believe we should be focusing on cost and just using a traditional concrete uh, roadway? Or is it worth investing in uh, grinding and polishing and sealing our concrete road deck and thus increasing the energy efficiency? Do you think we will get that money back over a relatively short period of time or will it be uh, several years? Tell me what you think in the comments below. If you've not done so, or please like and subscribe. Join our Instagram channel or our Discord. Um, everyone is welcome as long as you have positive things to say on the Discord. If you just want to tell me that rail is really amazing and you really enjoy getting on your train and uh, you don't mind waiting 20 minutes for a train, then, you know, please don't join our Discord channel because we're about modern technology, not about the past. Thank you so much.